So we start off today with Pan X503. This is a Perry Mason by Earl Stanley Gardner. The Case of the Grinning Gorilla. No sort of cover art to speak of, which is typical of this period. Just the, in fact, almost like the Bond opening sequence, the circle, and then that little still of a woman inside there. Three and six. This one um, first published in 1961. This edition is from 1966. And you will find that some of the books we're going to have a look at today aren't necessarily the first pan printings. Most of them are, but some of them are just reprints, but the first to bear that number. That's worth bearing in mind. Um, so this is uh, Richard Gordon. Now, he was famous for the Doctor books, but they were being published by Penguin at this point. So uh, Pan had this other one, Nuts in May. This one's in need of a bit of a clean up here. There he is on the back. Don't know if you've ever seen the Doctor films, but they're pretty, pretty good fun. And the books uh, are equally as amusing. Six, uh, five oh seven rather. Tom and Jenny. Kenneth Warner. And quite a lot of the books from this period are ones that I have just picked up out and about on my travels at boot sales and charity shops. So they're not in particularly great condition, but they're uh, they'll do for the time being. The wrong box. This is Robert Louis Stevenson and Lloyd Osborne. This is a film tie-in. It says the, a macabre comedy. Really interesting cover that with uh, sort of an illustration going around the side. Looking at the uh, author there, it looks like... Uh... No, I couldn't quite make it out. It's, it's so small, I can't quite read the author's signature there. The uh, cover artist, rather. There's some of the cast on the back. John Mills, Ralph Richardson, Michael Caine, Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, Annette Newman, Tony Hancock and Peter Sellers. Well, it must have really died at the box office to have such a great cast that I, I think I've hardly ever, I don't think I've ever heard of it. The Wrong Box. Um, no, I don't think I've ever heard of that one. It certainly is a star-studded cast, but wow. So uh, X510 then, Passion Flowers in Italy. This is the sequel to the uh, the Passion Flower Hotel. It was a bit like the, uh, the St. Trinian's vibe, sort of young, sort of schoolgirls getting up to mischief. There's also um, a, a movie of one of those as well, Passion Flower Ho Hotel. All the Nice Girls. John Winton. One of those sort of comedy comedy titles there. Yeah, quite a few rough ones in this particular batch, but we're not going to worry. <laughs> um, Andrew Garr, now he's a crime author. Prisoner's Friend, X515. Slightly better copy of that one there. I did pick up a little run of um, Andrew Garve, and I think that came from that particular collection. There were some nice Fontanas in there as well. And here's another one by the same author, The Sea Monks 516. Nice when these have been sort of bought from new and read once compared to some of my other ones. I wish all my books were like that, but sadly, can't have them always. Ah, this is a really nice one. It's the uh, the Hammer Horror Omnibus by John Burke. So this one adapts four Hammer movies. The Gorgon, Curse of Frankenstein, The Revenge of Frankenstein, and The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Um, the Revenge of Frankenstein had already been adapted, um, well, best part of 10 years before this, by uh, um, Panther Books. It had come out in Panther Books. And... Uh, this was John Burke's different take on it. Obviously, that one was long out of print. 
1966 uh, a pan pan original that one quite a nice one that the Hammer Horror Omnibus X522 the horsey set <laughs> by the author of chocolates for breakfast Pamela Moore I think it's a women's women's fiction possibly so it looks like to me Commander One, Peter George. Um, now, Peter George was the author of um, Doctor Strange Love. Um, once again, this one uh, focuses on the end of the world and uh, nuclear apocalypse, which is something which George was obsessed by. There we are, look, four Stanley Kubrick, so he dedicated this one to the great director. I've done a video on Dr. Strange Love. if you want to check it out. Now the first of a few Bond related books today. Um, so this is the Pan first printing of The Man with the Golden Gun. This one dates from 1966. And this one here is the um, Canadian printing, first printing, so it keeps the same number. As you look, it says X527, except this one's got a little 60 cents in the corner compared to the uh, the British one, which in my case is unpriced. Ever so slightly smaller, so the two together, tiny little bit smaller, a bit, a bit thinner. But you'll notice inside this one is um, published in Ontario. This is the first Canadian edition. So just a little variant to have in the collection. Um, in actual fact, the Canadian edition turns up on eBay quite often and um, a few people try and pass it off as the first, but well, you've seen both there, the first British and the first Canadian. Now, uh, another Perry Mason again, same sort of style that we saw earlier. The case of the Footloose doll. X537, The Girl on the Bus and Other Love Stories. So this is selected by Herbert Van Thal. So we've seen his name a few times with the Pan Book of Horror Stories, but this is more uh, contemporary authors. So you've got people like H.E. Bates, Anthony Burgess, Graham Greene, uh, William Trevor. Just a little compilation there, 18, 18 of these, something which... Uh, Pan did these, re these little anthologies really well. Next one's a great one from one of my favourite female authors. That's Patricia Highsmith. Two Faces of January. Nice copy of this one as well. Very, very good. And this one, once again, it's got the handcuffs cover. And this was uh, Pan's little way of denoting um, American crime. So the handcuffs with a small... Like vignette photo, uh, picture inside this one, a, a painted one. There's a photo of Patricia I. Smith on the back. Obviously most famous for the talented Mr. Ripley, which hasn't been published at this point. It's probably uh, a year or two later. Great author though. Next we have X546, Song of the Undersea, Ronald Kirkbridge, yeah, author of Tamiko, we've seen that one before. That one also had a sort of oriental lady with a towel wrapped around her. And here we have the seventh volume, X555, of the Pan Book Horror Stories, another one edited by Herbert Van Thal. A little bit of foxing on this one, but I don't mind. Great, great series. Got an original 50p in there. That's probably what I paid for it. And this one's actually a third printing of this one. So this is, uh, although it's the original cover, uh, this is one which I'm still after the first edition of, which I'll get round to in due course. Five, five, six then. John Minahan, A Sudden Silence. A novel about a girl in trouble. Intensely sincere and not a little harrowing, The Guardian. 
Okay. Once again, this looks like just sort of like like women's fiction. Now this one's quite interesting. So this was, as you notice up there, a pan original. So this is by J.B. Priestley. So it's not exactly an author, you know, an unknown. This is J.B. Priestley. Um, and this is a brand new book which came out as a pan original. So um, it's got a great cover by um, W. Francis Phillips there. Sort of like a maze thing there. A typical of his style with a few different elements. And this was a huge deal for Pan back in 1966. So much so, in fact, that they actually released a hardback of it at the same time. So this is a, a scarce Pan hardback. They did a, a handful of books like this. Um, I know Chitty Chitty Bang Bang came out as a hardback as well. And there is a bit different to the paperback. So it actually um, has a picture of um, Priestley on the back there. There we are, it actually says a library edition, 15 shillings. But quite interesting that one and uh, very unusual for Pan to release, or sort of co-release two books like that at the same time. So this next one is, well, a great one really. It's uh, the James Bond Dossier. Um, one I wouldn't mind getting a better copy of. This one's not bad, but it's got a little bit of wear. There's a sticker removal mark. But this is probably the copy that was in my dad's collection that I inherited many years ago. And you see, um uses the little montage. There's for your eyes only. There's You Only Live Twice and uh, The Man with the Golden Gun. And this is uh, by Kingsley Amos. It's like a, well, it's a little cash-in. Simple as that. A James Bond cash-in. That's what they could call it. <laughs> Although well written, I mean, Kinkley Amos is a great, great author and uh, I do really enjoy his writing, so I can't knock it for that. Next, we've got X564 and it's another Perry Mason here, the case of the calendar girl, Earl Stanley. And another one. Case of the Negligent Nymph, <laughs> another Perry Mason. I guess they were all the rage back then. And certainly these aren't um, too difficult to find these days. I think they probably did pretty good in the way of print runs and uh, sales. So they are around. This is another one of those Hitchcock anthologies. Stories My Mother Never Told Me, part one. <laughs> and yeah, this is your typical stories with a twist, basically. There they are, there's a few. Uh, Recognise Ray Bradbury there, Roald Dow, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Richard Matheson. So a few familiar names in there from that sort of genre. The sort of Twilight zone sort of one. X584 then is an Arthur Upfield. Cake in the hat box. Inspector Napoleon Bonaparte mystery. Bit of a worn old copy of that one. That's definitely come out of a, a second-hand shop. 586, same author. Another one in the same series. Bony Buys a Woman using the same format there, which I certainly don't mind. It makes the series more recognisable on the shelf. I reckon that's probably why they did it. This is quite interesting. This is a TV tie-in, uh, one starring Patrick Wymark as Sir John Wilder, another one by John Burke. Now, I've had this copy for many, many years. It's a really nice and red one, but it's trimmed, so the bottom has been trimmed off, so... I don't know, it, it stands a little shorter than a regular pan book. And um, I don't know if all the copies are like that or not, because I've never come across another one. But there we are, a pan original, TV tie-in from 1966. Here's another Bond one, 
X592. This is also uh, by Kingsley Amos under one of his pseudonyms, William Bill Tanner, The Book of Bond. This one has had a hardback printing, first of all, before Pan got hold of it. Another one for 1966. Always good fun to see those. This is another great one. Now this is a replacement copy because I'd had one of these in my collection for a long time. Um, and um, one turned up on eBay and it had been signed. So there we are for, for Bertha and Kath, I guess. It looks like Happy Days, John Doxat. Quite nice to have. Don't get many signed pans. Uh, I've, I've come across a couple purely by fluke. But it's always nice to have a, have a few. X594, then the steel balloon, Huma Cleave. Totally photographic cover there. Reasonable copy of that one. We've moved on to 1967 now, when these books were being published. Here's a bit of sci-fi, Maroc 7. And this was a, a movie tie-in, starred Jean Barry, Leslie Phillips. Another pan original, Martin Sands. I wonder if that's a John Burke pseudonym or not. I don't know, actually, or if that was actually his name. Quite a thin little one. It could be John Burke, couldn't it? You never know. Now, this is a really nice one. So um, I'm a big fan of Dick Francis, and his first couple were of hardbacks were reprinted by Penguin Books. But then um, Pan got hold of him for a while. And these early ones are great, great books. So these almost came out simultaneously, X596 and X597, so for kicks and odds against. Good stuff. I really like Dick Francis. Um, and I'm currently trying to put a run of the uh, hardback first editions together, but they're quite tough to get in nice condition. So now we're on to X601, The Long Memory. So this actually says, look, a new edition of a world bestseller of 2 million copies sold. So I don't know if this is the first pan in this format. Yeah, so first published by Pan in 1954, this second printing where it was reset dated 1967. So Pan did publish this back in 1954. It's taken all those years to pop it back into print. X602, Let Sleeping Girls Lie, James Mayer, by the author of Hammerhead. That's a really busy sort of cover, isn't it? This is more what you would expect from 1967, I guess. Certainly that was uh, the year of psychedelia amongst other things. 611, Edgar Wallace, The Clue of the Silver Key. Quite a late Edgar Wallace there. 611, and then we got 618, which is H. Baldwin Taylor, also well known as Hilary Wall, the duplicate Interesting montage of the key and the bullet there. A blood-stained bit of cloth. Looks like your classic crime drama to me. A novel in a part of Pan's best of American crime fiction. So they've dropped the handcuffs on this particular one. Cool stuff. Paul Fryson, Bitter Body, 19th Century Canada. Okay, so a historical one, that one. 
use that little picture of the woman there on the back. I've cut that bit out. Pam would do that around this sort of time to make uh, make full use of their painted jackets. And this is another one by Andrew Garf, The House of Soldiers. Just a total montage, a photo montage cover. I've never read him, but I've heard they're really good. Maybe he's one of those authors that maybe drew a bit of a revival at some point. Quite a thick one, this. Um, a Neville shoot, but still in the X series. The Far Country. X624. Yeah, 1967. This one's a bit dusty. And I have made a, a note that I'm going to go through and uh, go through some of my older collections, like my pan and my penguins, because lots of them haven't sort of been treated to the, uh, you know, making them tidy and looking decent. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to sort of bag up some of the rare ones now as well. Uh, X629 then. Dare to be free. W.B. Thomas. One of the great true stories of World War Two. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's another World War Two escape. I'm surprised they were still a thing. Although saying that, that wouldn't have been too long after the Great Escape, the movie had been released. So, um, here's a, yet another John Burke movie tie-in. Um, a pan original, Privilege. Nice copy of this one. Paul Jones. Was the star. And I wonder how John Burke wrote these. I mean, he, if he didn't see the film, if he got maybe a copy of the uh, the script or something like that to work from. X638, The Pompeians, Ronald Bassett. Hmm, interesting cover jacket. That not a style that I like. It looks very unusual for a pan, doesn't it? But not my sort of cup of tea that one x641 the man who refused to die the story of the bravest man in the commonwealth an epic of adventure in the south seas and certainly the era of um beautiful cover artwork that pan used is uh has absolutely been and gone and uh, we've certainly passed the heyday that's not to say that there's not some good ones coming up because there are but they're just a bit more few and far between um lydia evie cunningham x649 it's a nice one there with the, the photo again it's again like a black and white photo with that color one popped in the middle Still 1967 here. Leonard Havertry. This is uh, Davertry rather. This is science fiction. And it's Pan X650. And this was their sort of sci-fi cover design for a little while. A Man of Double Deed. Not one I know that one. In fact, I don't think I've ever read Leonard Daventry at all. Really sort of glossy cover that one as well. It's weird, isn't it? Some of these have been really glossy. Some of them have been like a matte finish. Um, another sci-fi one here. Joseph Green. It actually does say above the pan logo, science fiction. And the uh, the Lydia there actually said crime. So they're differentiating the list now because I guess it was so vast at this point. The Loafers of Refuge. <laughs> So there we are, there's a stamp you wouldn't see now. Books, magazines and comics, Albert Bookshop, Deadpool. That's long, long gone. Oh, next another James Bond. So we got the, the Spy Who Loved Me here, a Fleming. Now I've got two copies of this, so this one's a particularly nice and sharp one. It's still the first printing. Um, I believe The Spy I Love Me is is the one that, that the Fleming paperback first that had the biggest print run. Um, 
Yeah, they're both first, but I, I believe one of them will just be my reading copy, which is probably the lower grade one. And I've got a really nice sort of almost done red one. I do love the jacket on this with the map there. And you can just sort of see it like maybe there's a flame coming underneath or something like that. Absolutely fantastic. There is something about the pan bonds that just make them irresistible to the book collector. X658, the adorable doctor. Mary Essex. This is, uh, once again, light woman's romance, the sort of book that's probably quite scarce to get these days. X661, and this is marked Western on the spine here. Jack Borg is Kid with a Cold. It's a very, very late Western for Pan, this. So this is, you know, this is 1967. Um, I suppose that, you know, the Westerns had certainly had their heyday. There wasn't a lot left on TV, was there, by 1967? Maybe Bonanza, I think. X665 then. Another Western. Russ Thompson, Green River Marshal. A uh, nice jacket on that one, actually. It's a, yeah, nice, nice jacket on that one. Six sixty nine, a John Creasy here, holiday for Inspector West. That's interesting. We're getting a little run with um, with cover artwork now. That's typical, isn't it? <laughs> Six seventy, funny ho ho and funny fantastic. This was uh, one of those um, humor titles, the hilarious successor to funny ha ha and funny peculiar. Well, yes, it depends on your humor, doesn't it? But I don't think these are that funny, but boy, oh boy, have we seen a lot of Pan Originals. That was a, yet another one this time round. X672 then, Andrea Newman, Mirage. I read this with gleeful, wicked excitement, Punch. Quite a nice little jacket, that one. And the last one we got to look at, which is number X674 is one by Victor Canning, the whip hand. One of the six finest thriller writers in the world, Reader's Digest. Well, is that as voted for by readers of the Reader's Digest, no doubt. And that one, once again, was 1967. So the lot that we've seen today literally only encompassed what Pam published in uh, the space of... Uh, a year, year and a half, and uh, some absolutely fantastic stuff in there. I think you'll agree. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed looking through that latest batch of vintage pan giant paperbacks. Certainly some fantastic books in that particular lot. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing if you've not already for vintage pan content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.